The Western anime community has a problem. It's not a new problem or a unique problem. It's been an issue for basically every fandom that's ever existed, but it's a problem that's been made dramatically worse by the very changes that have allowed this once small community to grow so quickly over the last few years. Simulcast streaming services like Crunchyroll, High Dive, and Anime Strike are allowing us to watch shows day and date as they air in Japan, at least when they actually get episodes out on time, putting us closer to parody with the primary Japanese audience for this content than we've ever been before. Sure, some streaming services still don't, you know, get it and think they can get away with making us wait another three months for Violet Evergarden, but by and large, we can watch the vast majority of anime that comes out in Japan when it comes out in Japan, which has allowed for series that would have once had slow global rollouts to become worldwide successes overnight. The problem is that the spotlight on those hits fades just as quickly as it lights up. With dozens of new anime coming out every season and pressure high to at least keep up with a selection of 10 or so good ones each season, there's not a lot of time in the day to keep up with older shows. Not even the monster hits of last year, just look how quickly the community at large moved on from last year's mega hits like Yuri on Ice, Erased, and ReZero. And this year, even Attack on Titan and My Hero Academia faded quickly. Even though Black Clover is objectively inferior to Hiroaka, it still draws more interest and views from you guys just looking at my channel's numbers simply by virtue of being new and relevant. As a whole, the anime community just loves to be current, and that makes perfect sense. A big part of the fun of watching TV shows or reading books or going to movies is engaging in the conversation surrounding them, and newly airing series are naturally going to generate the most active discussions online. Every new episode brings with it not just new content, but a flurry of tweets, Reddit comments, and memes. So many memes. <laughs> The trouble is, with this rush to find the new hot thing, we often end up letting the fires go out for many of the old hot things well before their time. Discussion is already dying off for Maiden Abyss, My Hero Academia, Recreators, and many other great shows that just stopped airing last season. And huge shows from earlier in the year, like Kobayashi's Dragon Maid and Konosuba 2 are just kind of gone now. In a climate where shows are forgotten almost as soon as their seasons end, it goes without saying that older shows end up in an even worse position. Back in the bad old days, when DVD releases and rare Western television broadcasts were the only legal source of anime over here, there was this implicit expectation that everyone, or at least everyone who was deep enough to go to conventions, had seen certain shows. Back then, it wasn't uncommon to hear conversations like this. You mean you haven't seen seen FMA? You haven't seen Evangelion? You haven't seen Gurren Lagan? How can you call yourself an otaku? You've got to go do that right now. Okay, as soon as I right now. I, I mean, I I've got work in an hour and quit. Fuck your job. Gurren Lagan's more important. Well, I've also got a study and look, if I see you tomorrow and you're not caught up on Gurren, you are dead to me. And then the next day, Guy B would come back all like, Holy shit, right? Holy shit! And then he'd have the same conversation with his other friends, and they'd all quit their jobs to watch Gurren, and that's how the Great Recession started. It wasn't always the best, obviously, to have this expectation that just because you were into anime, you had to be caught up on all of these classics, even if they weren't in a genre that you prefer. It's nice that nowadays you can just watch what you're into, unless you're an anti-tuber whose job is to watch literally everything and keep up with the popular stuff. Sure, it's weird to meet someone who's never seen Attack on Titan, SAO, My Hero, Hero Academia or One Punch Man, but none of those are prerequisites for true fans like Cowboy Bebop and Ava once were. Nobody will blink twice if a person like that says, ah, Attack on Titan's just not my thing. It's no longer the case that you automatically lose your otaku card just because you only watch mainstream shonen stuff or you prefer niche series like Sakura Quest to the big essential hits. The flip side of this, though, is that we're losing some of our shared frame of reference, as well as a great deal of 
perspective on the history of anime. It used to be that you could make reference to Full Metal Alchemist or Cowboy Bebop or Gurren and Ava when discussing another show and expect to be understood. But with the huge new wave of anime fans brought in by shows airing on Crunchyroll and Netflix and Hulu, that's no longer a safe bet. I mean, eight years after the collapse of ADV, aside from out of print and ludicrously expensive DVDs, there's still no legal way to watch Neon Genesis Evangelion in the West. So that kind of complicates things, but even shows like Bebop and Gurren that are readily available on streaming platforms don't see the kind of play that you'd expect for so-called essential classics. According to Crunchyroll's popularity chart, Great Teacher Onizuka is about as popular as Two Car, and more people are watching the genuinely offensive and terrible Wolf Girl and Black Prince than Gurren Lagann. Of course, these shows may be more viewed on other services, and they probably get more consistent views over time than these other flash-in-the-pan shows, but that's still worrying. And beyond these classics that were enshrined in our community in the early days when we were much smaller, I worry about new potential classics that may be tossed aside altogether today. Out of the 50 top-rated anime on my anime list, 19 ended after 2015. Yet out of the 50 most popular shows on the site, only 8 were airing in that same time frame. That indicates a few things to me. Firstly, with the anime community having more niche series to dig into than ever before, the small, dedicated fan bases of shows like Rakugo Shinju and Sangatsu no Lion are giving them a bump in the ratings, one that they might not get if they were seen by more people who are less inclined to like them. But that doesn't explain many of the series we see fall off in viewership these days. Haikyuu was widely talked about and generally well-received when it was airing. I don't know anyone who was watching it and didn't want to gush about its hypest moments, but once the last season was done, it was just done. But that doesn't mean that older series are getting any more love to compensate. 36 of those 50 most popular shows were on TV after 2010, and only two, Bebop and Ava, came out before the year 2000. And aside from Toradora, all of those mid 2000s series aired on American TV in some format, mainly Adult Swim and Toonami, though Clan Ad and Elf and Lead appeared on the anime network instead. There is this Goldilocks zone in the early 2010s when simulcasts and illegal fan subs were becoming more and more accessible, but the market wasn't yet totally oversaturated. That gave us many of our most popular shows. Fate Zero, Hunter x Hunter, SAO, Attack on Titan, Parasite, Madoka, Steins Gate, the list goes on. All of those are great shows, but not necessarily any greater than Mob Psycho 100, Konosuba, Death Parade, Haikyuu, or any of the other contenders from recent years, or the countless older shows that never even got a chance on American TV, for that matter. These shows just happen to hit a sweet spot in the growth of the anime audience in the West, and even those huge shows aren't talked about all that much anymore, except on the rare occasions that they get new seasons or movies, and even then, as soon as the follow-up is finished, the hype just dies down like any other flash-in-the-pan seasonal show. Audience attention is a limited resource, of course. Nobody has time to watch everything, and not every great show is going to get the audience it deserves, so it makes sense for people to get absorbed in whatever is new and participate in those conversations. But there's no reason to think that you'd be any more likely to find your next favorite anime in the upcoming season than you are to find it in the last 80 or so that you've missed over the years. And the problem with this is twofold. Not only are people missing out on shows that they could potentially love just because there's no hype around them right now, a lot of older shows are becoming increasingly difficult to watch, legally or otherwise. With the notable exception of Ava, most of the big older anime are on on some streaming platform or another. High Dive even has The Legend of the Galactic Heroes, but many more good niche older series are lost to time now or only available in laughably poor quality with terrible fan subs. And without a market for those older titles, it's unlikely that any Western distributors will remedy that anytime soon. So what can be done about this? A lot actually, and a lot is already being done. Small independent anime distribution companies like Nozomi Entertainment, Anime Ego, and Pied Piper Inc. Pied Piper! Uh. 
no relation, have crowdfunded limited Blu-ray runs of Aria the Animation, Otaku no Video, and Skip Beat, respectively. And with Funimation getting in on the act for a remastered Escaflone Blu-ray set, it's likely that we'll have the chance to support at least a few other niche releases through channels like Kickstarter sometime soon. And, like I said before, services like Crunchyroll, Anime Strike, and High Dive have all been building up impressive catalogs of legacy titles. And, of course, Funimation and Viz both have impressive selections from their old DVD licenses. Nozomi Entertainment even uploads a lot of old stuff to their YouTube channel for free. But content is only as good as its audience, and these companies aren't going to keep paying for these old licenses if they don't end up paying out. That's where we, as the audience, come in. It kinda goes without saying that supporting the Kickstarters helps, but it's equally important that we actually watch these shows through legal channels. So if there's an old anime that piques your interest or that you remember and want to re-watch, before you go sailing the high seas, try to find it on High Dive, Crunchyroll, or Anime Strike. Or search for it on Because.moe, a site that lists every legal streaming source for every show. Then sign up for a free trial, or just bite the bullet on a month of that service if you have to, to support the show. For older and less popular shows, every view really does count. Of course, that's all fine and dandy for people who are already interested in those older series, but how can we generate more retro interest in the simulcast-obsessed community at large? On the streaming platform side of things, the answer is pretty simple, but also fairly complicated. More marketing. Obviously, spending more time and money promoting these older shows on social media and on Crunchyroll's homepage and the like would bring more viewers in, and they already do that more than any other licensor does. But since interest in new shows is much higher, they get a lot more bang for their buck promoting new shows like Juni Taizen, MMO Junkie, and Black Clover. It's a bit of a catch-22 in that respect. One possible solution would be to add an algorithmic recommendations tab, similar to what Netflix has in place. Crunchyroll does already have a recommendation algorithm, but you wouldn't know it looking at the site since the recommendations only appear on show pages, and it seems to heavily prioritize what's popular over everything else. With a few tweaks and a prominent placement on either Crunchyroll's front page or the Q page, a suggestion box could drive a lot of traffic to older series and new shows alike, and probably drive up Crunchyroll's viewer engagement overall. But let's look outside of computerized solutions. Alternatively, I think that a really interesting solution to this problem lies in the Passport to Japan contest that Crunchyroll recently ran. That contest rewarded viewers of eight fall simulcast shows with a chance to win a trip to Japan, and it seems to have been pretty successful. Many of the shows in the Passport contest are among the most popular of the current season, including MMO Junkie, which didn't exactly seem like it would be a big hit at first glance. Can you imagine what would happen if they ran a similar contest to promote catalog titles like FMA Brotherhood, Cowboy Bebop, Fist of the North Star, and Lupin the Third? Maybe not for such an expensive prize, but they could easily entice people with a year or even a lifetime of free Crunchyroll Premium or some similar prize at almost zero cost. Call it the Anime Academy Report Card or the Anime Time Machine or something like that, and they get otaku watching older shows in droves. But still, getting big companies to make moves like this, even low-risk ones, is a tall order. So, again, what can we do about it? In the anime community at large, our anime, of all places, has found a pretty good answer with their rewatches, where everyone watches one or two episodes of an older series a day and comes together to discuss it. This is a fun way of mitigating the advantage that new shows have in terms of water cooler buzz, but these rewatches tend to only get a few hundred viewers out of the subreddit's 500,000 members, so their effectiveness is a bit limited. The subreddit mods could help a lot by making events out of some of these threads, stickying them every day as rewatches are running, or hyping them in the sidebar in place of that AMA box that they don't ever seem to use. Our anime is one of the biggest hubs in the anime community online, and its mods have a lot of power to have a positive impact if they choose to. But that applies to any center of anime discussion on the internet, really. My Anime List, Anime News Network, and the Crunchyroll forums, even Annie Twitter, could all benefit from similar community-driven 
events. And, you know, come to think of it, this channel is a pretty big hub for anime discussion too. And I do try to direct people to older series. That's the whole point of my obscure anime top lists and the Kakegurui Kaiji videos that I made earlier. I bundle a bunch of cool older shows together, tie them to something popular so that the YouTube algorithm doesn't bury the video, and hope that it convinces maybe 10 or 20 viewers to check those old shows out. But I want to do more. There are tons of old, great shows that I want to cover and tons that I haven't seen yet and want to watch and talk about, but it feels like I just can't because the way YouTube works and the way that the anime hive mind thinks, it's bad for business. So I'm making an effort to change that. From now on, every month on Mother's Basement, I'm going to be watching through at least one older series to talk about it on the Weebcast, and if I think there's enough material, I'm also going to be making a video about it. I'll be announcing each retro series at the end of my first video of each month and releasing the podcast toward the last week, so you'll have plenty of time to watch along if you're so inclined. I'm also going to try to rope other YouTubers into this mad quest, so with any luck, you'll be able to continue the conversation on on their channels as well. Next month, we'll be starting things off with a discussion of Cardcaptor Sakura because the new anime is coming out next season and I am hyped for it. And after that, we'll be discussing Tekaman Blade, aka Technoman, with Wooly and Pat from the Super Best Friends, finally making good on a request from one of my generous and patient patrons. And as for retro goodies, this month, we're going to be talking about Tokyo Godfathers, Satoshi Kon's Christmas masterpiece on the Weebcast, so stay tuned for that. Make sure you subscribe to Mother's Basement to catch all of that as it goes live, and while you're down there hitting that button, let me know in the comments what other retro anime you most want to see me talk about. If you want to watch these shows along with me, support me on Patreon, and you can join me for monthly anime nights, where we'll be watching them at least once a month, and you can join my Discord for live live discussions of each series all month long. And when you finish a show, don't forget to send your thoughts and questions to weeklyweebcast at gmail.com so we can read and discuss them on the air. And if this video has you itching to get into some other retro shows right now before we start doing all that, click here for my top lists of anime you might not have tried, sorry extra credits, or click here for an analysis of the Gynax short that started it all for them, Daikon 5. And don't forget to subscribe to my second channel in order to catch each weebcast as it goes live. I'm Jeff Thu, professional shitbag, signing out from my mother's basement.